So if you have seen my Willpower Toolkit or downloaded the Willpower Toolkit, um, started reading it at all and doing any of the exercises in it, first of all, bravo to you. And secondly, there's a lot about butterflies, especially in the beginning. I use butterfly as the symbol on the cover page and I talk a little bit about metamorphosis and transformation and why I chose the butterfly to be symbolic of that whole, um, that whole journey that we go on, not just with willpower, but also with, with other aspects of our lives that, that are always taking part of, of our evolution and our transitions. And so, but I also am an artist and I wanted to go ahead and just do a fun little ditty on painting a butterfly that is actually not part of the willpower toolkit it is it that is more about exercises and practices and and redirecting temptations but this is just about some fun so let's go ahead and enjoy butterflies so i am going to be using my gouache paints and if you have acrylic paints, you can do that same thing, or you can use gouache, or you can use watercolor, whatever you would like. But I'm gonna be using a good bit of my gouache and probably some of my some of my watercolors. So I'm gonna pull up pull those out as well. Let me go ahead and put me up there in the corner. And so these are by Art Philosophy watercolors. These are, there's three different sets that I, that are my go-to sets. I have a bunch of other sets, but these are my favorites. And so these are the classic set, the tropical set, and the Odyssey set. I do have some Nick Pro brushes that are right here on the side, but I'm also going to be using some other brushes that I've got. And then I'm using just one of my little Strathmore journals. This is a watercolor journal that is 140 pound and you can't see it very well because it's on my um, dark tabletop. Let me put that down and then you can see kind of how big, I don't even think if that helps, but anyways, you can see that it's, you know, it's not very big. It's a great little um, small short activity kind of journal. And then my gouache set that um, I'll put all these, I'll put all these links in the uh, information that goes with the video. And so I'm just squirting my gouache. This is a great little set because the gouache cups can dry out a little bit, even if you have a cover on them, but all you have to do is wet them with water with a spray bottle and they're fabulous. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this journal. I haven't used this journal for a while, I have another one that's this exact same size that I keep in my travel bag, and that's what I use a lot. So this one was one that I that I had in my in my studio, and I and I really haven't used it for a while. So I'm gonna do the um, the age old what is it the Warshak test when you do colors on one side or paint on one side, and then you close your book and you see what it what you see after, but I'm going to actually make this uh, a little bit more butterfly shape to begin with. So, and the reason why I'm doing that is because I, I am not really about symmetry, but a butterfly likes some symmetry, right? So I'm gonna take some of this darker blue color of my gouache, and on this side, because I work better on my right side, pulling out, I'm going to do the beginning of my butterfly wing. And I want it kind of wet because I am going to be smushing my page and getting the shape onto the left side. So I'm gonna go over this now and make it pretty Painty, pretty painty, is that a, is that a word? Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and push it over to the left side, smush it down. And my goal is not to have a complete butterfly, just kind of the shape so that I've got wings that are fairly symmetrical. 
and then I'm gonna pull that across and there we go so I do and I kind of like that and also doesn't that give us a little bit of a metaphor too about how um, as we kind of release our color through the day right we're we're left with less in our in ourselves and so we just kind of have to replenish as we go along and so I like that that is how that ended up and that's actually how I am going to keep that now my original idea was that I would just paint accordingly however I wanted to on each side without smushing over but now I kind of think that I'm going to play around with some some more smushing and see how that goes for me so I love just to bring color wherever I feel it. I'm not thinking, I'm just letting my brush move. And so I'm gonna go ahead and press that over again. And isn't the kindergarten style painting, isn't that just the best? I mean, I absolutely love it, I love it. So the other thing, as I'm evolving through here, as I'm going through here, I'm thinking, wow, well, this is light enough that I could actually do a lot more writing on this side too, if I wanted to do some writing. I don't know. We're just gonna see how it develops. So let's get some body going on on this side. And right here, it's this is not going to uh, I'm going to show you. It's probably not going to leave enough mark because I, I don't have it too wet and it's right in the center. But, oh, it did more than I thought it was going to. There we go. Okay. And let's give a little bit of a purple, oops, a little bit of a purple head up here. And I was going on the left side this time because I'm trying to make a circle and I always have to have a full place to do a circle. If I didn't want to do that, let me get a little piece of scratch paper out. If I didn't want to have my circle go to the other side, I can always put a piece of blotting paper right there, use that to help me kind of round out my circle. That's how, that's just the, how I work. I have to have something there to have that circle. And then I can move my blotting paper And there we go. Now I've got it over there. Alrighty. So, and then stick my finger in the blotting paper exactly where the paint is, is, is what I did. All right, let me see what I want to do. I'm going to put in another color that's going to work blue. And let me put in this lavender or this periwinkle. I'm really into this a periwinkle color right here. It's kind of the color of my shirt, actually. that up and then one more color Let's see if I can get this purple I really should have my my gouache on my right side And so just a little bit of that went over to that side. Getting less and less. Actually, I might put a little bit more. Notice how in the metaphor of this process that I am pressing this paper and color is of course going to the left side and talking about how through my day my brightness my color it gets used it gets kind of put out into the world and then i've got less left here but it's not there's not a whole lot that is coming off of here that's noticeable to my eye it still looks very strong on that side and isn't that the face that we put out front too a lot of times at six o'clock in the evening we have to put on the same face for whatever we're working on or whatever we're involved with. Let's say we have to go to a school function in the evening or a social function in the evening. 
and we have to put on the same face that we did earlier in the day so we're bright and cheery and engaging and that's exhausting so over here on our left side that's our exhaustion kind of showing that's what we have inside or at least for me at least for me okay so what I'm gonna do now is get into some of my watercolors the re one of the reasons why I absolutely love gouache and watercolors is because they just work together so I am taking a color from my classic set this turquoisey color and I am just painting this entire wing with this turquoise and it's going to activate my gouache just a little bit especially if I hover over it that's okay and I'm going to pull in some of that and just kind of start to get rid of the lines I'm not about coloring book images I'm not crazy about about um, having outlines so as I work I tend to if I used outlines for any reason I tend to blur them get rid of them look how pretty that is but I do like the pressure the texture that happened from pressing around very deep colors okay so now I'm going to take that same color and I'm going to put it over here And it's not going to activate as much because there's not as much to activate. is so pretty very pretty colors and I'm gonna let that dry a little bit but because I just love having um, background I'm gonna go ahead and put in a little bit of background and take some of this green pop it around Got a little bit of orange that dripped in there and I kind of like that too. So I'm just pouncing. I'm going to take some of this teal, pounce around, and I'm, I'm really trying to use colors that will not make mud when, when it touches that blue. So I can kind of keep muddy, but muddiness to the minimal. And it's all right if it drips. I'm all about drips. In fact, I'm going to drip in just a minute. Drip on purpose. Get some blotting paper. There we go. And I like the way that that orange worked over there, so I'm going to put a little bit of orange in here too. Didn't really mud it up a little bit. And I'm just popping that, popping that in there. So it's pretty wet. Let's see, let's put some pink in there. And so this, as you can see, that it, it's pretty wet. And when I'm putting these drops of pretty wet watercolor, which means that my brush is very wet, and I'm just dropping some colors in there, and it's just moving around. I really like that. Okay. So now let's play a little bit with 
the butterfly itself. So I've got this streak of pink that went down when I opened my book. So let me go ahead and blot that. So I'm going to put in some um, more detail lines, and but I'm putting them in by actually taking paint off. You can see these little tracks that I'm working into. into the paint here by taking the paint off. It might break down your paper a little bit, but I wouldn't worry about that. Down here. And I still like leaving this kind of as is right there. So I'm going to put in some, I'm going to dry this real quick with my little heat gun. Okay, so that's pretty dry. So that's my first layer. That's a base for me to go. So I hope you enjoyed that little jaunt into butterfly painting. And um, I ended it for you before I went into um, my imagery. And that imagery lesson continues in Art and Soul Playbook. So if you are a member there, you can go pick that up with one of the tutorials. And if not, why not? Come join me. Art and Soul Playbook is the best engagement experience guide so many good words to describe what it is but really what it is all about is showing and leading you into some inner exploration with a lot of art and a lot of painting and a lot of creating so that you can find your expression and naturally have it come out, communicate with the world, but also expand your horizons. So I hope to see you in Art and Soul Playbook. Thanks so much. Bye.